Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about bird deterrence, and we'd like to thank Kit Rice for liking and sharing the podcast. The first recorded use of scarecrows was in ancient Egypt to protect the wheat fields from quail. Mm. And in ancient Japan, scarecrows were dressed in raincoats. They gave them bows and arrows to protect their (laughs) rice fields from birds. In Germany, their scarecrows were made to look like witches. Mm. And in the 1800s, German farmers in the U.S. started making human-looking scarecrows. They called them boogeymen. Mm -hmm. And this is where they started putting on straw hats and red handkerchiefs around their neck. And they would use loose-fitting clothes so that it moved in the wind. Do scarecrows actually work? One of the best. You can't beat a scarecrow. (laughs) I'm being serious. Do they? (laughs) They're effective in short term. In fact, a lot of the research that I was looking at, they say for short-term use, scarecrows do a a really good job. For Hmm. some reason, birds know the shape of a human. And if you move it, so scarecrows that where they have posts where you can move it around the fields, right. they say they're very effective if you're mm. constantly moving it. Weird, huh? Yes. So birds can be a real nuisance around your house if they build a nest in your dryer vent or your plumbing stack or right. your chimney. And, and I don't like them. <laughs> they can get into your attic. Sometimes they get into people's grills. Mm. And their waste is difficult to remove from roofs, light fixtures, from your patio because after it rains... It changes it into salt and ammonia, and it can corrode metal, concrete, and paint. Hmm. And birds can carry over 60 transmissible diseases, and their droppings can cause illness. According to the Center for Disease Control, in the 1970s, a building was demolished in Indiana, and there were so many bird droppings in there that the dust cloud caused 120,000 people to get sick. That's gross. In 2001... 523 students became ill after a worker rototilled the dirt around the school, and they said it was covered in bird droppings. Hmm. So if you have birds in your attic, it can be a real health problem, and you want to get them out of the house as soon as possible before they build a nest. So get up in your attic, open any windows or vents. You want to play loud music to scare them off, and then keep the lights off or as low as possible. Do this during the day Mm -hmm. so they fly toward the light. And then you'd want to put bird netting or wire mesh over any opening so that they can't get back into the attic. If you find any dead birds, you always want to assume that they're diseased. So the CDC and the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health say to wear rubber gloves and a dust respirator or a dust mask. You want it to be N95 or better. And N95 is going to block 95% of the particles that are 0.3 microns or larger. Mm -hmm. So it's going to protect you against most disease. And that's the best balance between the price and the protection. So an N99 blocks 99%. An N100, (laughs) 99.9% of all particles. Many of the pros are recommending also wear disposable booties over your shoes. Hmm. That way you're not dragging anything into the house. Right. You want to spray a soapy water solution on any droppings and in the whole area. That's going to minimize the dust when you're cleaning the area up. And then disinfect it with a 10% bleach solution or disinfectants. Hmm. If you find an empty nest, it can contain bed bugs, bird mites, ticks, fleas, and a lot of other pests. So wear rubber gloves, a respirator, a dust mask. You want to spray it down with a pesticide or a 10% bleach solution first. Mm. And then you're going to put it into a plastic bag and seal it up and then clean and disinfect the area. If you find eggs in the nest or baby birds, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of laws that prevent you from removing the nest till the birds leave the nest. Right, because that'd be murder. (laughs) So it depends on the, the species and your local codes. So it's probably worth calling your local village to find out what to do if you find eggs or babies. Mm -hmm. What a drag to get arrested, (laughs) taking this out of your attic. There's over a thousand species that are protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918. Hmm. So this was put in place to stop feather trading, which was a big accessory in the late 1800s and early... For men's fashion. Early 19... Sure, for cowboy hats. (laughs) So hats, dresses, uh, shoes, earrings, persons... Thousands of birds were being killed just for the feathers. Mm. The passenger pigeon was one of the most popular birds in the U.S. They had iridescent brown feathers. There's estimates that there were about 5 billion of these birds in the 1800s. Mm. 
So they were hunted and killed in such numbers that in 1914, the last confirmed bird, Martha, was in the Cincinnati Zoo, mm-hmm. and when she died, they became extinct. Wow. Poor Martha. If you have birds on your porches or decks, you can hang reflective bird deterrents, so they're going to reflect the sunlight and move in the wind, and some make a crackling sound, so it scares birds. 3D balloons with eye shapes, for some reason, are the most effective, and you can hang these from a string. They move in the breeze. Spooky. Owl-shaped balloons are plastic owls, Mm -hmm. so some plastic owls have glowing eyes or a head that moves. You can get the Dalen solar-powered action owl, Mm -hmm. so it never needs batteries. It has a solar solar panel on its chest. Okay. In some studies, a plastic predator like an owl or a coyote is going to work. If they can see it from the air, Mm -hmm. it's going to dissuade them from going into an area. And a lot of the studies say that it's more effective if you move this every couple of days. Bird X has a prowler owl with a four-foot wingspan that sets on a post, and the wings move in the wind. Wow, that's impressive. And some pros are saying for decks and porches, just taking a simple mylar balloon, so like a helium-filled balloon that's very shiny, and Mm -hmm. tie that to your porch or deck, that reflective material and the random movement in the wind is going to scare most birds. Hmm. And Bird Be Gone has a highly reflective spinning fan with a base, so you can mount that right to your rails, and that movement and the reflection scares birds. Hmm. If you have light fixtures and you're having a problem with birds, you can put rough objects on top of the fixture or bird spikes, Mm -hmm. and it's going to prevent them from landing on the surface. And the bird spikes can be put on top with a two-sided tape, adhesives, or Velcro. You can either get plastic or metal. And bird spikes are one of the most effective bird deterrents. So if you have ledges... they look cool. <laughs> yeah, they kind of look mean. <laughs> so for ledges, windows, rooftops, any, anywhere narrow or, you know, like around your chimneys, air conditioning units, uh, you can put these above your gutters mm-hmm. if you have birds always hanging out in your gutters. And what's cool is it's actually humane because they won't land on it, so right. you're not hurting the birds. And the bird spikes are approved by the U.S. Humane Society and the PICAS. So that's the Pigeon Control Advisory Service, <laughs> and the P, and it's actually a lot, capital P, a small I, capital mm-hmm. C A S, says that anti-roosting spikes can be up to a hundred percent effective if you pick the right product and you install it properly. Hmm. To install bird spikes on wood, you're going to be using screws for concrete, construction adhesive, or polyurethane caulk. For metal, other surfaces, usually silicone. Mm-hmm. And they come in a variety of widths, 2-inch, 4, 6, or 8-inch wide spread. Mm-hmm. So depending on where you're putting it, it's you have to match it up so they can't wedge in between it or behind it. Most of them are going to be held with a flexible plastic base, and so it can be shaped like on top of a satellite dish. Right. And some of the plastic bird spikes have additional branches that come off each spike, so you're mm-hmm. going to cover more area. And plastic is really good for coastal areas, so if you have a high salt content, oh, you wouldn't yeah. want to use metal. Some of the top-rated bird spikes are from Bird X, so it's just bird and then an X, <laughs> and then Nixalite, N-I-X-A-L-I-T-E. Mm. For your plumbing vent pipe on top of your roof, you can what use an... So this is the pipe coming out of the top of your roof. This is connected to your plumbing system. You're going to have a main stack and usually a few of these pipes coming out, connecting, depending on how big your house is. Okay. And it's just open? It's just open. You don't have to have a cap on it because if water gets in it or snow gets in it, it just goes right into your main plumbing drain. Right, but I can see other problems. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I can too. So I would either use a nylon bird netting and cover that, or you can get something called a roof vent boot guard or a crown vent guard. And this is just an open grate that's going to prevent birds from building nests in that pipe or squirrels from getting in there because Mm -hmm. if this gets blocked, then your drains aren't going to drain properly. Hmm. For chimneys and attic vents, this is a nice place to have a cap Mm -hmm. and then a steel mesh around it. And that mesh is going to prevent birds and squirrels from getting in. And the chimney caps with the steel mesh, they come in a variety of sizes and shapes. So measure your chimney first Mm -hmm. and, and check out how it's attached to a lot of them will have set clips or set screws to okay. hold it in place. Another thing you got to worry about is dryer vents getting clogged with birds' nests because right. they can cause a fire. Mm-hmm. And then if you allow a nest to be built, those baby birds can get down into the vent and get trapped. Ugh. That happened to my parents when I was a kid. Yeah. Their neighbor, okay. like, she opened up the dryer and a bird flew out. And I think that's why <laughs> I'm scared of birds and I hate birds. Because that would be terrible, right? <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> no, it would be terrible. Ugh. 
The cage style vent covers tend to collect the most lint and clog the easiest. Yeah, this is definitely something you need to check. Yeah, you need to have a routine with this. You can get louvered vent covers. They don't clog as easy. And some of these are designed to snap off. So the, the face of this will cut, pop off and you can clean it very right. easy and then just pop it back on. Although over time, they do tend to, the plastic ones tend to they dry, deteriorate. They dry out and crack. Right. Yeah. A dry... like on a windy day, they could just snap right off. Right. Yeah. Like if you're running the, <laughs> the dryer. My, right. That's happened to my parents. <laughs> It was like one of our routines when I was, was a kid. To check the... Uh... Well, my dad would go on the ladder. He'd take the wet dry vac up there. Okay. And I would stand guard with a broom. In what, case, in case birds? In case the birds came back. Because like every spring there is always Oh, they'd always birds. build a, a nest yeah, in yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So my job was to keep the birds away yeah. from him. Well, I like the louvered also because, the, you know, there's the, the narrow slats, it's mm -hmm. harder for a bird to get in there. Right. Where the vent covers that open completely, you know, right. much easier for them to get in. Mm-hmm. A lot of the pros were recommending vent covers with the magnetic vent covers, right. so they close really solid. Mm -hmm. But again, you have to keep checking it because lint gets under the hinges, right. and so it doesn't close properly. Lambro has a dryer vent seal, so it's L-A-M-B-R-O, and it almost looks like a drum. A pipe's coming out of the side of your house. You've got this drum with a lid on top of it, and this is going to prevent cold air from getting into the vent if you hmm. live in a cold climate. And this is certified by UL, ASTM, and Energy Star. And another similar style is the Heartland Dryer Vent Closure. So you should have a routine where you're checking the vent cover to make sure it's not clogged and making sure it opens and closes properly. Right. And then also once a year you should clean out your dryer duct because hmm. there's thousands of fires every year just from this lint building up. Hmm. How do you clean it? There's a variety of kits you can get. Most of them have flexible rods and a lint brush on the end, and you can either do it by hand if you have a short distance between your dryer and straight outside, right. or if you've got it up in your attic, or if you're going a longer distance, then you can take these flexible rods connected to a cordless drill, mm -hmm. and then you can either turn on. So they have a bunch of different fittings. You can have the dryer on, and it's going to help blow out all the lint while you're using this tool oh, yeah. down the ductwork. Or you can connect a, a wet dry vac to it, mm -hmm. and then use this tool, and it's going to suck it back out. And one of the top rated is Lint Eater. Hmm. For gardens, ortho and sprayway have motion detector sprinklers, and mm -hmm. a lot of the pros like this for birds and other animals because it's hard for them to adapt to it. Right. You can get nylon bird netting and create a frame. Mm -hmm. And I like the PVC post. You can use tees and other elbows, and this is something you can take down depending right. on the season. We did a nice video on this, by the way. Yeah, yeah, we created one. It did a nice job. You can get motion-activated sound machines, motion-activated strobe lights. There's a scary man bird scarer. <laughs> what? So this is five <laughs> foot six inches tall, and it inflates. So it's a scarecrow oh. that inflates and deflates, and it makes a sound. <laughs> so it sounds like an alarm going off. And so hmm. this is going to scare birds, rabbits, squirrel, deer. Yeah, your one neighbors. Of, one of the <laughs> one of the things they listed. Mm -hmm. Kangaroos hate it. Oh. That's good to know. You can get 3D balloons with the eye shape on it, the fake owls, and then a variety of deterrents most pros are saying are going to work the best for gardens. Mm -hmm. Although the nylon cage is one of the best. You know, they just can't get <laughs> The get, bird netting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, can't get to it. For your roof or your yard, you can use an avian repellent, and methyl anthranilate is one of the most popular. So yeah. this is non-toxic. It's found in Concord grapes. And it's used to flavor bubblegum, Kool-Aid, soda, and ice cream. Hmm. And it gives off a grape scent. But for birds, it irritates their eyes, nose, and beaks. It's EPA approved, and they found no harmful effects on the birds. So you can either spray this or fog this. They've got special foggers for this <laughs> that you fog onto your roof or your lawn. Mm -hmm. And it's going to repel birds. And I was reading a couple research studies by the University of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And they have a homemade formula. Okay. So they say get four packets of grape Kool-Aid and a gallon of water, put it into a pump sprayer, and then spray it wherever you don't want birds. <laughs> if you have geese in your yard, first I'd put some grape-flavored spray on it. <laughs> geese like short grass, so most pros are saying keep your grass around three inches long. And depending on the grass, it's better for most types of grass anyway. You're going to get longer roots. It's going to keep your soil temperature cooler. Mm -hmm. You're going to have less evaporation of moisture in the soil, and you're going to have less weed germination. 
and geese tend to like Kentucky bluegrass the best. Mm. So if you're overseeding your lawn, you'd want to go with something other than a Kentucky bluegrass, <laughs> depending on where you live. They don't like the fake coyotes. That, and sure you want they to, don't like the real ones either. <laughs> and you want to make sure that you place it so that they can see it while they're flying and trying to land in an area and mm-hmm. then move it occasionally. And anything that moves, so like that scary man, scarecrow. Right. <laughs> and there's also something called the goosinator. Right. And this is primarily for large areas like golf courses or parks. But if right. you've got a lot of land... And, and you a just pond. and yeah, and you just want to amuse yourself. Mm-hmm. This thing is remote controlled. <laughs> it almost looks like a seaplane without the wings. Mm-hmm. It has a rudder in back to control it and a propeller in front wow. that that moves it around. Mm-hmm. So it goes on grass, on wa- it'll go on the pond right. to chase them. It goes on snow or ice, mm-hmm. and it is very effective. You're teaching the geese that they don't want to be in this area, <laughs> and I guess over time they remember, mm. and so it can eliminate your goose problem. Nice. To keep ducks out of your pool, you can put a solar cover on it, and a lot Mm -hmm. of the pros say that's pretty effective. You have the automatic pool cleaners, and just that movement scares ducks away. There's a product called Duck Off, so it's D-U-C-K-O-F-F. It's a chemical that makes it hard for ducks to float. Hmm. So what do they do, drown? (laughs) No, they just struggle a little bit, and then they fly away. There's something called the pool garden gator. So it has a head, a body, and a tail made out of plastic. It's connected with hinges, and so it looks like it's moving. Mm -hmm. It has red LED eyes that light up and flash. Mm. Birdex has something called their gator guard floating gator head, Mm -hmm. and it has reflective eyes, but it's just the head that floats in the pool. Right. You can also use a motion-activated sprinkler. You can use scare-eye balloons. Mm -hmm. And then the Mylar balloons, again, a lot of the pros were saying it's very effective, that reflective material and just that random movement scares ducks. For the sound machines and birds, there's a lot of debate on how effective they are. So I was reading some studies from airport and landfill bird research and from the International Bird Strike Committee. Mm -hmm. And some of them, they say, are pretty effective. But almost all the studies say that over time, birds will adapt to it. So you need to use multiple devices. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty wild, some of these sound machines. So... The Vancouver Airport really likes them, Mm -hmm. and they have an airport version of these sound machines. It has 16 bird calls. It has different alarms, different distress signals, different calls of predators, Hmm. plus like 90 different irritating sounds (laughs) that that just make birds angry. So they found that for them it works very well, but they also combine it with a lot of other deterrents. Mm -hmm. They've got flashing lights and strobes and and other things that they use. They have pyrotechnics, so they're like (laughs) blowing stuff up, and birds don't seem to like that either. Good to know. There are some sticky products to deter birds from landing on surfaces, and the Humane Society says never use polybutyl gel because it gets on the feathers, it interferes with them being able to fly properly, hmm. and it also their ability to stay waterproof. Huh. There are electric shock tracks and wires, so if a bird lands on this, they get a shock, hmm. and they nice. learn very quickly not to come back. Mm-hmm. Yes, the Pigeon Control Advisory Service, they don't like it. <laughs> Do you have anything else to add? For birds landing on surfaces, the bird spikes are the most effective. Just make sure you get the right width mm-hmm. so they can't get around it. For roofs, the methyl anthranilate does a great job. and then you the want grape to, juice? Yeah, grape smell. <laughs> Combine that with other deterrents. And the main thing is combining with other deterrents. Gardens, the most effective is going to be bird netting. And then for your lawns, if you have a problem with big birds, get a dog. If you have a problem <laughs> with small birds, get a cat. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, iHeartRadio, and CastBox. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.